when it was evening on that day, which was the first day of the week. And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the, joy, the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, was one of the twelve, but he was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house, and Thomas this time was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So our gospel reading is from John chapter 20. Let's walk through the story. Let's walk through the narrative a bit and see if we are hearing this right. So the disciples have physically isolated themselves. They've locked themselves away from others in order to keep themselves safe. And they're afraid. And they're confused about what has happened, about the suffering and death of Jesus, and they're confused about this report that they have received just this very day, that his body was not in the tomb. What does that mean? And they're wondering, or more likely, they're worrying about what would happen next. What could happen to me? What risks do I face? And if the religious and political powers came after Jesus, would they come after me as one of his followers? So the disciples are experiencing isolation and fear and confusion and anxiety. It sounds like we could relate to that, right? Last week on Easter Sunday, we read from Matthew's account of the resurrection. And this week, the lectionary guides us to the Gospel of John. It is Sunday. And when John says it is evening on that day, the first day of the week, he means that very day, that day of Jesus' resurrection. And whatever Mary or any of the other women who were witnesses have told the disciples, they remain largely unchanged by hearing that. And so here they are, locked behind closed doors and perhaps ashamed and embarrassed because they were the ones who so closely followed Jesus, and yet they abandoned him and denied him. And at the very least, as noted by John, they were afraid. And so Jesus comes among them and says to them, What happened? Where were you? You guys messed up. No, he doesn't say that at all, though they might have expected that. He came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. In other words, it's okay. I understand. I forgive you. And imagine how they might have felt when they heard that. At their worst moment, 
when they were ashamed of what they had done, that they had abandoned and denied him, or maybe ashamed just as much of what they had not done, Jesus says, peace be with you. Peace in Hebrew is shalom, or in Greek, irene. And it is wholeness in every sense of that word. It is to wish for the physical and general welfare of another person. It is to wish for them reconciliation or healing within relationships. And when we are gathered in the sanctuary together, when we pass the peace, it is reminiscent of this exchange of Jesus to the disciples. Peace be with you, to wish someone wholeness in every sense of the word. Jesus says that three times when he is with them. First, when he initially appears to the disciples, then after they recognize them, recognize him, and then later when Thomas was with them. After offering that peace, Jesus breathes on them blesses them with the Holy Spirit, he commissions them, and he authorizes them to forgive sins. Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, so I had said, sent you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. You might remember the second chapter of Genesis when God is forming man out of the dust of the earth, and there is this creature, and yet it is not alive. And then God breathes into him, and this creature becomes a living human being. And it is that same life-giving breath that the disciples receive here. We need a new bold print name for this story. We're accustomed to, accustomed to labeling Thomas as Doubting Thomas, or even this whole story being about Doubting Thomas. And it's an unfortunate and a limiting view because Thomas doesn't ask for anything more than what the disciples, the other disciples, had already seen and experienced themselves, that they physically, directly saw Jesus. And so Thomas may be asking himself, how can I know, how can I encounter, how can I experience Jesus in the most direct, tangible, physical way possible? John's gospel uses the word abide to describe this kind of knowing, this kind of relating to Jesus. What is it to abide or be or remain or stay with Jesus? What is it to be in relationship with Jesus? And Thomas states honestly and plainly what he needs to see, that he wanted to see Jesus, to touch him, to put his finger in the mark of the nails and his hand in Jesus' side. What's interesting is that a week later when he has that opportunity, when Jesus again appears before them, Jesus again offers him peace, saying, peace be with you. And at that point, for Thomas, even though Jesus offers showing him his hands and his side, it's enough for Thomas simply to cry out in faith, my Lord and my God. Thomas doesn't need to see or do more than see at that point. It is not necessary to touch as he said he would need it. And so with this proclamation of faith, my Lord and my God, Doubting Thomas, so-called doubting Thomas, isn't doubting at all. But maybe he's honest Thomas or trusting Thomas. What would be a better name for Thomas? And maybe at a time of heightened anxiety for us, maybe we can appreciate Thomas even more for wanting the fullest experience of Jesus possible. Because in this story, we see ourselves in Thomas. That Jesus finds a way to pass through or overcome the barriers that are erected around us. Jesus stands among us in our anxiety-ridden spaces. 
And when we get all locked up, not just because of physical isolation, but when we are overcome by internal and external chaos, then Jesus comes to us too and offers us peace. Why are we afraid? Maybe that's all too obvious to state. The present health crisis confronts us with troubling questions about our own health, about resources, about safety, about how we experience that not just for ourselves and our family, but for the broader community in which we are a part. We're confronted with thoughts and worries about pain and suffering, about death and fragility. So in light of that, and in light of Jesus' offer of peace, let's say thanks be to God for Thomas for speaking up and saying what he needed, for him seeking to overcome the confusion and the fear that he and others were experiencing, and for seeking the most tangible personal experience of Jesus as risen Lord. I said we need a new bold print name for Thomas, not calling him Doubting Thomas, but finding a new and better name. And maybe we don't need to call this story about Thomas either, because if we suggest that it's about Thomas, then we perhaps overlook that it's about Jesus too. That even when the disciples were locked up because of fear that Jesus responds, he once again appears to all of them, to Thomas with them the second time, and he offers hope in the face of fear. He offers peace in the midst of chaos. And by God's grace and power, he offers the ability to look for life even when death is all around. Peace be with you, Jesus says. They were locked up in fear and weren't seeking out Jesus. He sought them out. He comes to them, appears among them, and offers them his peace. He provides the gift of the Holy Spirit, life-giving breath. And so our Lord and our God in the risen Christ comes to us, offering us hope in the face of fear, peace in the midst of chaos, and the ability to believe in life no matter how deadly the circumstances. And so when we have that life-giving breath ourselves, equipped with the Spirit, we are sent to reflect that gift out into the world, to share those gifts, to be and embody those gifts in the world. So thanks be to God for honest Thomas, for faithful Thomas. Thanks be to God for the gift of peace which passes all human understanding and for the gift of God's presence in the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen.